Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Ockwell Smith. Welcome to my latest SOS parenting video. So today I want to talk to you about separation anxiety, but not the separation anxiety that kind of hits between eight and 12 months in babyhood, but separation anxiety that happens a bit later in toddlerhood, in the preschool years, and even in the school years. So this is a question I get asked quite a lot. You know, I have a three-year-old who is really distressed if they're separated from me. My four-year-old's really distressed if they're separated from me. What do you do? So the first thing to understand is this is really common and it's pretty much a sign that you've done a good job. It's a sign that they have a very close attachment to you, which is a great, great thing um, and is a great predictor of confidence and happiness and actually um, for them to be more confident to be away from you when they're older. But the trouble is when they're younger, it's much more difficult. Now, I think we're seeing a bit of an increase in this sort of separation anxiety because of COVID, because during all of the lockdowns and the pandemics, what tended to happen is parents were at home with their children a lot more. Whether the parents went at um, work or the children went at nursery or preschool at school, a lot of families got used to spending a lot of time together, which is brilliant for that attachment and connection. But it's created a bit of a, a sort of a global separation anxiety as we're all looking to separate, you know, furloughs ended, schools and nurseries are open again. So what can we do about it? So first is just to accept actually it's common. Don't worry too much about it. It's a sign you've done a great job. You know, your child is strongly attached, which is perfect. Well done you. But what can you do about it moving forwards? So when we're talking older children, what I would say is it can be really hard if you're into gentle and detachment parenting and you're really upset if you see your child distressed, if they are separated from you. So you want to kind of hold on to them and protect them if they want to be with you all the time. But what I would say is in this instance, I don't think that really helps the child. What we want to do is basically show them that we are confident and happy that they can be away from us a little bit at a time. If we are constantly saying, oh, it's OK, don't worry, we won't separate you then. What we're doing in essence is enabling that anxiety a little bit and we don't want to do that so what I would recommend is that you're trying to increase the separation in little steps at a time so you're working on you know initially if you're at home if you have a partner at home and your child always wants to be around you initially just make sure that you pop out for 15 minutes every day and leave your child with your partner and if they're okay to do that then you can increase it to sort of half an hour or an hour but you do actually want to leave away not just sort of be in your garden or in the street outside where they can see you if they're okay with that then the next step would be to do separation with somebody else who's close to the child but who isn't living with them all of the time so it may be a grandparent an aunt or uncle or somebody like that and then what we would do there is exactly the same thing again we're trying to increase that separation um, in longer times but in that sort of one person detached away if that goes well, then maybe we're looking at spending a little bit more attachment with somebody else who's one degree of attachment away. So this could be with a child minder, this could be a little bit of time at nursery, it could be with a friend on a play date or something. And what you're wanting to do is start off in small amounts of time. So 15 minutes, half an hour, can you build it to an hour? Can you build it to two hours? But it's, it's sort of like a constant thing. Don't do this and then take a break for a week. What you're trying to do is increase it up every sort of other day or every week so that they're more and more confident of being away from you. Now, it's really important that when you are leaving them, you are calm and you're role modeling the fact that they are safe and it's they'll be fine that when they're away from you and you have confidence, they will be OK. And also you try to sort of hide any of your own anxiety at that point because we can become very anxious when our children are upset so it's very much about us presenting a happy and confident you know I'm going to miss you acknowledging their feelings but I'm going to be back soon and I think we're both going to be fine I'll be back really soon but just presenting that confident air when you're around them because they don't want to pick up on the anxiety from you. You could also use a few little props that can help. So things like if you tie some string on their wrist and your wrist, so it's attached. And then you can say, so there's always this string that attaches us. And when I cut it, so that you'll just end up with little bracelets each. What we need to remember is this string that is always attaching us. Or you can draw the little heart button on their hand and just and on your hand as well. And say, if you're missing me, you can press this and I'll think of you and press it. 
or you can use um, a comfort object so something sort of like a special teddy bear or even a piece of your clothing that helps them to feel um, you are with them in your absence as well but the most important thing is to keep working on that small doses of separation don't be trying to say they can't cope with being separated from me and that's okay I'll just have them attached to me forever because it doesn't really help and it will often add your own anxiety to it so do keep working on separation make sure that you're confident and happy acknowledge their feelings but say but I absolutely believe that you can do this and that you'll be fine make sure that you're always going back if they ever get very upset so if you leave them at nursery for instance and they're absolutely crying for 10 minutes or so then I would pop in and check up on them but don't be worried if they cry initially what we're wanting or expecting actually for a normal reaction is they will cry quite heartily very emotionally for five or ten minutes or so that's okay and again that's I think back about our emotions and how do we handle them too so I hope that helps thanks for tuning in um, I release one of these every Wednesday so if you do want to um, listen to another one please hit the subscribe and um, I'll see you next Wednesday many thanks bye <laughs>